Hello and welcome to the episode 281 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. Today we'll see the Beatles busy with early gigs and three recording sessions, and George Harrison giving an interview to BBC Radio. Let's start with the usual ritual. On the 8th of October 1960, Pete Best, George Harrison, John Lennon, Paul McCartney and Stu Sutcliffe shared the stage of the Kaiser Keller with Rory Storm and the Hurricanes for their first residence in Hamburg, West Germany. Two years later, in 1962, the Beatles, now in their definitive lineup with Ringo Starr on drums, gave up on another ritual. Their usual lunchtime booking at the Cavern Club in Liverpool had been cancelled today to allow them to travel to London where they were meant to record their debut on Radio Luxembourg at the EMI House in Manchester Square. Radio Luxembourg was a private radio station based in Luxembourg, which catered the British audiences. The Beatles recorded their appearance on the Friday Spectacular this evening, singing Love Me Do and P.S. I Love You, accompanied by the song's instrumental tracks in front of 100 teenagers, all clapping, dancing and generally having a good time. As customary, the lads were also interviewed by hosts Mario Young and Show Taylor, but since no recording of the show has survived, we don't know what was said or who said what. This episode of the Friday Spectacular was aired on the 12th of October, between 10 and 11 pm reaching about 3 million listeners throughout Britain. Which is more than what I managed to reach right now with this podcast. If you like my work so far, please spread the word with your friends and fellow Beatles fans, and if you want, visit www.simonmas.com support if you care to do more. If instead you find my work lacking, drop me a line, through the contact form on my website or otherwise, to tell me how I can improve. Thank you for being fab! On the 8th of October 1964, the Beatles returned to the EMI Studios in Abbey Road. Needing to record material for their forthcoming single, they worked on Paul's She's a Woman, recording the basic track between 3.30 and 5.30 pm. The best track to work on was Take 6, which ended with a 3 minute long jam, and with all the instruments recorded on the first track of the 4 track recording machine, and Paul's vocals recorded on track 2. After a tea break of an hour and a half, the four returned to the studio and, working from 7 to 10 pm, they recorded all the necessary overdubs on the other two tracks with Paul also re-recording his lead vocals. Another session in 1968, as always taking place at the EMI Studios. The Beatles were busy for 16 hours straight, from 4 pm to 8 am. The session began with work on Long Long Long, with George Harrison adding a second acoustic guitar and a double-tracked lead vocal and Paul adding a bass track. The focus then shifted to the first of the two new songs that John had brought to the studio, I'm So Tired. The song had been in fact written in India, but it was the first time the band tackled its recording, completing the basic track in 14 takes, featuring Paul on bass, Ringo on drums, George and John on acoustic guitars, and John on lead vocals. Overdubs were immediately added, with John double-tracking his lead vocal and Paul adding harmonies. The song was rounded up with more drums, electric piano, organ and guitars. Finally, it was the turn of the continuing story of Bungalow Bill. The rhythm track was recorded in just three takes, and countless overdubs were placed on the results. The recording ethics were now at the opposite of what they had been during the 1967 recordings of Sgt. Pepper's. Back then, imperfections were not tolerated. Now, 
they were encouraged to build the right feel for the track. In Bungalow Bill's Curses, for example, everyone in the studio was asked to participate, singing the lyrics however they liked. Shouting, applauding or whistling were considered part of the happy atmosphere of the song. Yoko Ono's Not When It Looked So Fierce was the first and only female solo vocal line ever appearing on a Beatles record. The session was concluded with producer George Martin's assistant Chris Thomas adding a Mellotron track for a £9 fee, about £160 in 2020 money. Finally, in 1969, George Harrison was interviewed at the Apple headquarters by David Wigg today for BBC Radio 1's Seen and Heard, discussing the Beatles Abbey Road LP and the Radna Krishna Temple single Hare Krishna Mantra, which he had produced for an Apple release. The interview was broadcast in two slots, the first on the 12th of October and the second on the 19th of October, with both shows aired between 3 and 4 pm. This concludes our current episode. Join me tomorrow for more stories about the four you love. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love.